What's up fuckers? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back on 2K21 and I have made a modern version of a whites only NBA with a caveat. There will be one black athlete allowed in this experiment. None other than the Big Diesel, you may know him from Kazam, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq is widely regarded as the most dominant basketball player to ever play the game, so I'm thinking in an all-white league filled with plumbers, therapists, and podcasters, all he's gonna see is barbecue chicken. White meat, that is. That means players such as Ennis Cantor and Yuta Watanabe are still good to go in this league, but I'm not allowing Blake Griffin, Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson. I know there's going to be comments about that, and I know there's also going to be comments saying that why is Tyler Hero in the league? He's black. Ha ha! I've heard it before, but no. This is a scientific experiment. The facts shall prevail here. So if there's any black in them at all, they're just not allowed in this league. It would be too unfair unless your name is Shaq. And in total, including a lot of free agents that aren't actually signed to a team, the amount of players that actually pass these standards that I have created come in at a whopping 86 players. So I had to cut down the league a little bit. There's actually only going to be 12 teams in this league. And by doing this, all 12 teams will have at least seven real players. And the rest of the league will be a 40 overall build that I have made named Junior Junior. And I'm also only going to be including the 12 oldest NBA franchises in the NBA. Also, I'm going to be doing a fantasy draft and the draft will be in order from oldest to newest team. I also went ahead and turned off fatigue and injuries. I'm going to take control of all 12 teams, but I'm not going to draft for them. I'm just going to simulate that. But here you can see the order that they're going to be drafting in. And we'll just let the Xbox do its thing here. And as you can see, the back end of the draft is filled up with Junior Juniors. By the way, Junior is 5'4", 350 pounds, 40 overall with 40 overall potential. This league literally isn't possible without them due to the lack of players. America may run on Duncan, but my all-white NBA runs on Junior Junior. But the last real white guy to be picked in this fantasy draft is Tyler Zeller, a 72 overall. And the second to last player is Jared Utoff, which true story, this guy was actually my basketball coach at an Iowa Hawkeyes basketball summer camp. He was a pretty cool guy, but it looks like he's the second worst white guy in the game now. Sucks to suck. And as you might have predicted, Shaq was drafted first overall. To be fair, the guy does literally stick out like a flying milk right now. Followed by Shaq was Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, a few Vitches, Tingus Pingus, you know, all the good old white guys. And Shaq's sidekick is going to be Danilo Gallinari. Luka's going to have Evan Fournier. And the Celtics already have Nikola Jokic, but I guess they want Ola Nick. Denny Avdia, Juan Hernan Gomez, Alex Caruso, one of the blackest guys in the league at this point. Nico Mannion, an interesting choice. He was a ball of his life prior G. Just gonna call this guy Allen because I can't say that name. And Jared Utoff. I downloaded a draft class of 40 overalls with 40 overall potential, but then 2K for some reason adds 40 more players to your league that are just completely randomly generated. And usually they're bad enough that you don't really have to worry about them, but in this case, even a 60 overall player is gonna be a key role player for any of these teams. So I had to go through and import Junior Juniors player DNA on every single one of them. And at this point, my league is more than 50% Junior Juniors. They're just taking over. And Junior Junior just happens to be pure Aryan blood race so <laughs> so now that the NBA has a PR nightmare on their hands I'm gonna go ahead and simulate two weeks and check back on the Kings and see how they're doing they actually did quite decent in this time period they're four and two they're now the number one power ranked team and Shaq isn't actually putting up any crazy stat lines just yet he's averaging about 30 and 15 which isn't that crazy for Shaq going up against a bunch of whiteies and from this point I thought I'd just go ahead and simulate all the way up until the all-star events the all-star captains are also the two highest overall players in the game right now Shaquille O'Neal and Nicole Jokic. Pau Gasol snuck into this all-star game for the seventh time. The majority of the players are first-time all-stars. JJ Barea is about 40 years old and five foot seven, so that's about the standard you've got to be to be an all-star in an all-white NBA. Tinkus Pingus is somehow a starter, and Tyler Hero seems to be having himself a pretty good year. And also, the majority of these guys, like I said, are just big white men. I mean, it looks like I'm looking at the average frat group that has a one-token black kid so the fraternity isn't known as racist. I mean, frat groups know that you can't get away with raping people on a regular basis and being racist, that would just be too much. Gotta throw a little diversity sprinkle in there so you keep getting the funding. Just gonna skip the Rising Stars challenge because who cares. Team World beat Team USA, Tyler Hero had 25, Nico Melli had 23. The rest of the guys seem very European and I'd probably have a stroke if I tried to pronounce all those names. And the three-point shootout, probably the event of the year. I don't think many people are looking forward to the dunk contest with the, you know, the whole white thing going on. And I'm gonna be honest, it looks about the same as if we allowed blacks in it. So I'm gonna let the computers figure this out. And here we go. We got a bunch of white boys that are ready to shoot some open threes. 
it's just another day on the job, really. Jokic just went out there and shit his pants, got 11 points, which isn't going to get him into the second round. Evan Fournier with 13, and he's got a money rack of 5 balls, 15, 17, but sounds so good. Never mind. Yep, he's got 13. And Luka Doncic is up next, and I'm a retard, so at this point I accidentally tapped A, and I skipped his performance. He had 14 points, which is the highest score so far. Tyler Hero had a nice start and ended up with 16 points in his first round. Danilo Gallinari had a pretty decent round. He ended up with 17 points, which puts him in first place. Really, he was just hitting the money ball at the end of every rack. And Joe Harris just completely froze. He ended up with 12 points, puts him ahead of Jokic, but that's not going to get him into the second round. Ironically, the White's only three-point contest isn't going that well so far. A bunch of low scores, but Danilo Gallinari, Tyler Hero, and Luka Doncic are moving on to the next and final round. And Luka, again with just an average shooting performance, but hits a deep ball for three extra points. And I want to say finishes strongly, but really only ended up with 14 points again, with an extra seven seconds to go. And then let me just sum this up. Tyler Hero had 11, and Danilo Gallinari had eight. Both these guys just shot their low back onto their chest. Happens to all of us, but not Luka Doncic. He's going to walk away with the trophy today. And now moving on to the dunk contest. These are the four individuals they originally gave me, but I don't understand why they didn't choose Shaq to be a part of this, so I'm going to make sure that happens. I went ahead and took Shaq's teammate, Denny Avdia. I knocked the wind out of him, which is going to take him one to two weeks to recover from, and I also gave him a hernia. Not sure how I did that, but it's been done. Also, just for science, I took another contestant, Daniel Tice, and gave him a 25 overall standing dunk, driving dunk, vertical, and I took away all his dunk packages just to see how he will do. He's also 5'4 and 350 pounds now. And all it took was a hernia knocking the wind out of Denny Advia, and I have Shaquille O'Neal in the dunk contest. He seems to be the fan favorite for this contest considering, well, he's black, and one of his contestants is 5'4 and incapable of dunking. And Daniel Tice still decided to show up to this event. He shrunk overnight. He can't dunk anymore, but we're going to see what he can do. So he's just going to stand there all sad with the zero points. I know it's a lot to follow, but following that act is Shaquille O'Neal. We're going to see what he's got for us. He goes up for some type of dunk. Not sure what to call that and misses it. Fair is fair, though. He's been hanging out with white guys for a whole season. You're going to miss some dunks. And then does another whoopty whoopty thing and just dunks it. And with that, he gets a score of 34, which may not seem like a lot, but that's going to be the high for this dunk contest. Next up is Maz. This guy's known as a shooter. I don't even know why he's here. We're going to see what he's got for us. Going up for the one hand dunk and that's it that's all we're gonna get from him not gonna embarrass himself today just gonna get in and dunk and get out and he got a 26 which is one point above the bare minimum score you can receive could be worse next up is maxi kleba another good old white boy who's known for his shooting abilities in the league and i'm sure he's about to roll out a kia any moment now and go do a 360 over it nope he's just gonna one hand dunk okay and i didn't even touch this guy i didn't touch him or cork Maz. they're actually just this bad at dunking and this must be the best available dunkers we have and he got a bare minimum score of 25 the lowest you can receive and here we go 5-4 daniel tice see what he has for us today previous score of zero this man shouldn't even be able to dunk but he just bounced it off the floor windmilled finished it okay 2k yep yep so he did that in the second highest score yet a 33 and jack pretty much just has to dunk the ball and he wins but we're just gonna see what he came up with Ooh, a little little spinning cock back or something i don't know what dunks are called still the rims are shaking the boats are rocking don't come a knocking 31 not bad so that means the next two dunks need to be around a 40 for them to have any opportunity to win this and nope that's not gonna do it and between the legs first try one of the only first try dunks today and got a dunk score of 30 seems a little bit harsh but still a strong second place for maxi cleva and the obvious winner shaquille o'neal the only black guy in the league he's got an extra bone in his foot or something yeah unfair but that is a possible way to have a custom dunk contest if you just set up a season like this and just keep injuring players when it becomes dunk contest time and don't start it until you have the players you want in also the mvp race at this point after the all-star game is looking like luka is pulling away with it he's averaging about a 40 point triple double and Jokic, not bad 33 and 18 could be better and shaq just 28 and 16 but Shaq is averaging an extra block than anybody else. Really just Tingus Pingus with 3.1 blocks per game. And his free throw percentage is actually beating three white guys. 
so not bad. Went ahead and simulated the rest of the season, and Luka Doncic won MVP. Alexej Polgieski won Rookie of the Year. Mike Muscala was Sixth Man of the Year, and Shaq with Defensive Player of the Year. Not bad with 3.3 blocks per game. And also, Shaq did not make First Team All NBA. Oh my God, 2K's racist! So the first thing you may notice is that the playoffs look a little bit different. I do only have 12 teams instead of 30, so only four teams from the East and four teams from the West make it. The only format that looks any worse than this is the WNBA. In Luka's first playoff game against the Wizards, he scored 54 points. He ended up sweeping the Wizards and scoring 60 in his final game, which would be the third highest scoring night in a playoff game. But Luka and the Pistons swept the Wizards, and Shaq and the Kings swept the Bulls. Sabonis and his now fellow All-Star teammate Peyton Pritchard advanced the Golden State Warriors to go meet up against Shaq, which probably isn't going to go too well. But in the East, Jokic and the Celtics advanced to meet up with Luka, which ought to be interesting. It's sort of like a white boy showdown. Shaq scored 40 in his first game against the Warriors, and in Luka and Nicole this matchup, Luka had 38, 10, and 10, and Nikola had 32, 19, and 7, and they were really just throwing up haymakers of stat lines throughout the entire series. The next game, Luka had 56, 13, and 12, while Jokic had 48, and 10, and the Kings actually lost the game when Shaq only had 30, and 13, but Sabonis had a 28-point triple-double, but the Kings and the Pistons won the rest of their games. In game 5, Luka scored 55, 22, and 14, which might be the best playoff performance of all time, and Shaq still just putting up a modest 34, and 21, but but Luka better bring some of that white boy magic or him and the Pistons aren't going to stand a chance and this is only a one game elimination in the finals. And we are going to just hop into this game and see how it goes. The starting lineups are actually pretty evenly matched if you look at the overall average. But it looks like Luka might be giving Nico Mania the work. And Shaq is probably going to have his way with Drew Eubanks the same way he would as if they were in a prison cell together. First play out of the gate and Gallinari takes a contested three-pointer but Shaq gets the put back. A few possessions later and Shaq with the solid screen that frees up Denny Avdia. Which by the way has completely recovered from the hernia and having the wind knocked out of him. Again the Kings are just giving the ball into Shaq. Don't see a reason why not to because he can just do that. But then Luka finally wakes up here, drives by everybody, and just rises up. Here, number 14 tries to throw up a shot over Shaq. He doesn't even really have to jump, and he blocks it. Here, Luka sort of gets open, but decides to put up a weak layup around Shaq, which didn't work out. Hernia Boy decided to put up a fadeaway jumper, but it doesn't matter because he has Shaq on his team. The Pistons call a timeout because it is 12 to 3, and Shaq has 10 of the 12 points. Here Shaq's trying to get more of that barbecue chicken, but Alex Len is just not having it. And he actually blocks it with a hand he wasn't trying to do anything with, but if that's not 2K, I don't know what is. But the next possession down, Shaq got angry and dunked on Alex Len. And then Daniel Tice here just avoiding Shaq gets the second field goal of the game for the Pistons. And on the Kings' last possession of the quarter, Shaq gets fouled, so this whole fiasco is starting. He ends up going 1 for 2, and at the end of the first quarter, the Kings are leading 15 to 5, while Shaq has 13 of the 15 points. And the Pistons working on their pick and roll, real fundamental layup right there. But Nico Mannion with a pretty decent dish to Shaq right under the basket. And the next possession, Len gets fouled on the shot, and the Kings decide this would be a good time to give Shaq a rest, even though fatigue's off. But at this point, Shaq has 15 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks. And the Pistons do have a window to come back at this point, considering there's not a big, brawlish beefy black man in the paint protecting it. But Nico Mannion thought he'd take over the reins while Shaq gets a rest. Puts up a bit of a fuck you three to put up the Kings by 11. And the very next play, he's diving on the floor. And by the way, Luka is averaging 46.6 per games in the playoffs while Shaq is averaging around 32. Here's another white guy sequence, but Alex Len with a pretty solid dunk. But Luka here starting to catch fire, goes off the screen and hits a three pointer and follows that up with a step back jumper right in the face of Nico Mannion. And here this play, I don't really know how to explain it. He misses, he throws it off his back. He blocks it, Len dunks it, something like that. But two-point game, the Pistons are coming back as soon as Shaq comes out, no surprise. So the Kings decide to put Shaq back in. He posts up immediately, but Alex Len with the block just not having it. Shaq may have met his match at this point. But nobody scores for the rest of this half. And before halftime, you get a great interview of Dwayne Casey, in which the 2K cameraman had the camera inside one of the security guards. And at the half, Shaq has 15 points and 10 rebounds. And Alex Len, the surprising top performer, with 6 points and 4 rebounds. I guess it is true, Luka would have to be the Robin to Alex Len if he were to join up with him. 
first bucket of the second half and Denny finds Gallinari on the backdoor cut. And Luca again just responds by driving right past the defense and going up for a two-hand dunk. But Shaq decided to pull a Giannis here and just drive from the three-point line and bully everybody. And he finished it off with the layup. And this possession right here is really just a great representation of what is going on on the parts I'm not showing you. Shaq just out-rebound four people and tried finishing on the same four people. 200 IQ, Auburn education. And at this point in the game, we had our first junior-junior appearance. But there's one out there for each team and they're guarding each other, so fair is fair. And Shaq here goes to double Luca, and Luca finds Ty. Tyler Zeller for the three-point bomb. Not too shabby for the last overall pick. But then Shaq proceeds to immediately score on him with ease. At this point, Nico had Luka closing out on him with Shaq matched up with a junior junior, but he decides to shoot a three-pointer, which just so happens to go in. He may or may not be the boss of this team. I don't really understand the dynamic here. And this is just a completely weird sequence right here because Luka gets blocked on the layup that he could have dunked. Junior Junior gets a rebound and has a perfect transition pass to Nico Mannion, who just pulls up for a jumper and that goes in. I don't understand how he's doing this. He's only a 72 overall. I didn't touch anything. He's just going off. But I guess we are talking. <laughs> And the next possession, things just keep getting weird because last overall pick with the and one on Shaq. Shaq here with another Giannis move, just driving in. He probably would have killed Evan Fournier on this play. Best case scenario, he's still breathing. And Shaq actually makes both his free throws here. That's the first time I've seen that. And in between quarters, we get another Dwayne Casey appearance in which he freezes time just for him and a few others around him. Classic 2K, just a classic Alfredo. First possession of the fourth quarter, and Shaq just demoralizes Alex Len. Nobody scores for another minute until Shaq isn't actually doubled this time. Misses, gets the rebound and the putback. And at this point, the Kings are up 13. So if the Pistons, aka Luka, doesn't do something quick, they aren't coming back. The Kings get another stop and Nico finds Alex Caruso running out on the break. He hits a corner jumper and immediately just starts emoting down the court. Even though that's the only time he's scored today. Fuck, if that is a Mamba mentality, I don't know what is. Really not much scoring going on in the fourth quarter. I guess that's what happens when 9 out of 10 players are white. But Drew Eubanks with a very sloppy finish, but a finish nonetheless. That's what she said. <laughs> and the Pistons now decide it's time to start pressing down 13 with two minutes left. But Nico Mannion, the Italian stallion, with the play of the game, lobs it up to Shaq. Can barely tell the difference between him and Kobe at this point. And at this point, Eubanks bombs a three and misses. Nico, again, is Kobe Bryant, but without the skill and abilities. Luca decides it's time to take over and air balls. Shaq's half-ass in defense, but it gets another block. I believe that is his third of the game. Eubanks here with the transition defense, finds out a way to hug two men and get away with it. But at this point, the white flag should go up. The junior juniors are coming in the game. The goats are coming out. Alex Caruso, Nico Mannion, that is. And on the last play of the game, we get to see something really special. The only official junior junior shot to ever be seen. And of course he misses and Shaq's throwing somebody. But that's going to do it. The Kings win. Who could have seen this coming in a league full of white people that Shaq would have been dominant in it? Shaq won finals MVP and Nico's right along with him trying to fit in. And for some racial reason, I'm sure Shaq wasn't allowed in the locker room for the pictures. But you know who was? Nico Mannion's forehead. Again, just trying to sneak into the spotlight. But Shaq finished up this game with 28 points, 16 rebounds, and 3 blocks on 12 for 19 shooting. Nico Mannion with 10, 3, and 5, although he shot 4 for 13. The majority of his misses were just getting wide open looks after Shaq was getting double teamed. And Luka with an underwhelming 10 points, 1 rebound, and 1 assist on 4 for 15 shooting. But Alex Len and Tyler Zeller showing potential. 6 points each, looking pretty good. Shaq was awarded finals MVP, and at this point I was going to try to simulate some of the other seasons just to see what would happen, but 2K had a few major issues. I think it had something to do with the junior-junior population being over 50% of the league, and all of them wanted to retire. And as soon as I try advancing to the next season, my game just quits app. But I can pretty much tell you the future of this league. Shaq's going to dominate and win a ton of rings. However, Luka's going to eventually become a 99 overall, and maybe his team is going to win a few. Nikola Jokic might win an MVP. The three-point shootout is is going to be the highlight of the league. The dunk contest is going to be something they try to sweep under the rug. Probably make it pay-per-view just so it's hard to access. But generally, the league would be unwatchable unless you were at a Kings or Pistons game. And this just serves as further proof that being racist is not good for business, and that is why you will continue to see McDonald's commercials being more colorful than a Van Gogh painting. That's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching, especially this being a longer than usual video. Don't donate to charity. If you have COVID, just get over it. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one.